I think in your project one, you a lot of you are formulating your problem into optimization problems. And uh, for those of you who were not lucky and you formulated your objective function, it, it formulated your problem into a very high dimensional optimization problem, you notice that the optimization problem can be very difficult to solve, right? Low dimensional optimization problem with a few parameters. For example, if my, my n is equal to two, I should be able to solve these problems with no difficulty. But like you can imagine for this kind of, a for very complex functions, I may, need, I may need a large n to have a good approximation. So it's not trivial how to solve general optimization problems of high dimensions. But if I define the distance in a particularly good way, the optimization problem can turn out to be very easy to solve. So for example, if I define the distance between two functions f and x to be the following, to be the square root of the integral over the domain, let's say a and b, f minus x square. Uh, maybe I shouldn't use x here. So f and g, let's say, dx square root. All right, that's the least squares distance, right, between the functions f and g. Okay, so if I want to minimize over all the possible g's that is in the space big X, that kind of minimization is called a projection because it is looking for the minimum um, because it is looking for the minimum distance in the L2 sense between F and G. So let's figure out why is it called projection. It is called projection because of the following. So, so let me say I have one point in space, let's say this point, like the, the tip of my pen. And the space I want to, as the space of G in which I want to, so, so let's say this is F, okay? And I want to find a G within on the table that has a minimum distance to G. How should I find it? What, what is the special relation of that minimum distance G uh, with F? Uh, yeah, I can just uh, drop my pen and the point on which it lands is that G, right? <coughs> or in other, in other sense, I'm drawing an orthogonal, I'm drawing a, a line that is orthogonal. I start with F and I go into the space in the orthogonal way. Once I hit the space, I find G, right? It's that simple. So the orthogonality can be expressed like that. Orthogonality to a space. So, so let's say if I, if I go uh, from F to G, that is G minus F. G minus F is the vector from F to G, right? The vector from F to G is orthogonal to the space X is defined as for any G prime in X. G minus F times G prime is integrated to zero. So that's the meaning of orthogonality. And the reason is the following. So if I find a particular G that minimizes that distance, it also minimizes the squared distance. That uh, should be pretty obvious. Right, and uh, so let me just call this G star because G is the uh, result of this optimization problem. So then, for any G, I can express let's let's define uh, so G star is the minimizer. Let's define G prime being the distance between G and G star. Then this can be represented as integral of f 
minus g which is equal to g prime plus g star g is yeah uh, g prime minus g uh, so so yeah g is equal to g prime plus g star dx and that because of the property of the square that's very special that's why we design our objective function to be f minus g square I can expand this into f minus g star square uh, minus 2g prime times f minus g star plus g prime square dx right so I'm just expanding these perfect squares okay and you can see that this term because of g prime square integrated is always greater than zero so as long as I can make the second term to be equal to zero so if integration of a times g of g prime times f minus g star dx is equal to zero then the left hand side is always greater than this f minus g squared dx is equal to integration of a and b f minus g star square dx plus g prime square dx and this is always greater than this and it is only equal when g prime is equal to zero everywhere right almost everywhere so that means if I can have this equal to zero for any g prime in that linear space then I know that f I know that that g star is the minimizer of this distance function distance squared distance function let me write that down so which is also saying that g star minimizes the squared distance function among all the g's in the linear space right so what I have done I have transformed the optimization problem to an equality problem so so the optimization problem optimization problem has been transformed into a equality problem for R G prime in X okay does it make sense and now remember that if I can express uh, the the X if I can express all possible g prime in x as a linear combination of the basis of the space x, then I get a linear equation for numbers, and uh, uh, I I also have finitely many numbers. So so the reason for that is if I can express g star is equal to a summation of i goes from 1 to n of uh, let's say a i times x i where x i is a basis for so so let me let me uh, avoid using x let me use phi because x i want to use as as space uh, it's a basis for phi. Uh, it's a basis for x. Okay. Then this equal to zero becomes uh, okay. So also for any g. So if I if I enforce this equality for any g prime x and 
all these VIs are also in X, right? All the basis functions are members of the space. So, so this I can simply enforce that VI times F minus summation of AI times VI dx equal to zero. And the reason I use phi here, uh, so let me just use phi j here because I, I use the i for this for this summation. So the reason I substitute phi j into g prime is because if I can have this equation satisfied for all the phi j's, then this equation is linear with respect to phi j. I can multiply any bj onto this equation and sum over j to get the same equation for any g prime right so then if i if i have this then for any g prime that can be represented as any j goes from 1 to n bj times vj the integration of a to b of uh, bj can be pulled out of the integral times vj f minus summation of ai phi dx is equal to zero because all the integrals are equal to zero so a linear combination of these integrals is for sure equal to zero right Questions? Yeah, both G prime and the G star has to belong to the same linear space X. Very good point for the projection to work. So now, remember I have transformed the optimization problem to an equality problem for any G prime. Now I have transformed the equality problem to this equality right to to a equality problem for any x for for any g prime to a equality problem for a finitely many phi j's so here up to now i have arrived n equations one equation for each j for n unknowns because the ai i goes from one to n are unknowns Right? N equations, N unknowns. That enables me to solve it.